unfolding just as President Trump announces an investigation into Beijing's trade policies, which critics worry will affect China's future role in curbing the North Korea threat. Here to discuss, Michael Pregent, an adjunct fellow at the Hudson Institute and a former intelligence advisor to General Petraeus, and Michaela Dodge, a senior policy analyst at the Heritage Foundation, also a nuclear weapons expert. I'm so excited to talk to both of you, Michael and, uh, and Michaela. Michael, let, let's begin with you here. We discussed the economic angle to all of this earlier, but in a Wall Street Journal op-ed today, we heard from the defense secretary and we heard from the secretary of state essentially saying, we're ready to respond should North Korea provoke us but right. we need to pressure China more. What can we do? Well, we're doing everything we're supposed to do. We're, we're reassuring our allies in Japan and South Korea that the U.S. is there for them. Uh, Dunsford is, is going to China after his visit to South Korea. Mm -hmm. So this, this, uh, this message from Tillerson and, and Mattis today, what I liked about it, they said, we're changing the strategy of strategic patience to strategic accountability. Uh -huh. They also said, they messaged Kim Jong-un, uh, the most important thing for him is, is the U.S. trying to uh, force regime change? Mm -hmm. In this op-ed, they basically took that off the table, saying that we're not there to, to, to change out the, the, the regime. We're just there to make sure that you don't develop a nuclear capability. Yeah, and should you attack us, we could basically annihilate your country. So in that, in that sense, you do force regime change, no? Well, you, you, at some point, it needs to happen. Yeah. You know, Michaela, um, the, um, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joe Dunford, in South Korea today, meeting with top leaders there um, to explore a potential military option, also to assure South Korea we're on your side, we're going to make sure you're, you're safe. But in this potential military intervention, what would it look like in your view? I think it would be very difficult endeavor and uh, path there would not be very pretty. Path out of there would be maybe even less pretty. So I do think it's very important for the United States to assure allies in the region. It's very important for us to clearly articulate what our game is as far as North Korea goes. And I am glad um, that we are developing options. I'm glad that we have systems and options and military options, mm -hmm. economic options in place. You know, uh, over the weekend, it seemed like calmer heads prevailed. Hence, the market was up uh, phenomenally today. The Dow pushing closer to 22,000 again, Michael. But Defense Secretary Mattis moments ago said, um, we'll know within moments where a missile coming from North Korea, where it's going to land. And should that happen, quote, it's game on. Right. M That's Mattis, a provocation. Exactly. I mean, Mattis is, is the, the, the warrior monk. I mean, he's, he knows how to say things. He, uh, Kim Jong-un has actually hinted that we may not be able to hit Guam, that the, the strikes would be off the coast of Guam. And that may be something that our Defense Department sees right away, that the missiles were not, are not going to mm -hmm. come anywhere close to it. So that gives both of us a, a stand down option, that we don't do anything. But like Matt has said, if it's going towards Guam, then game on. Let me just jump in here with breaking news. We just received this. South Korean media reporting that North Korean state media has announced that Kim Jong-un has been briefed on a plan to attack near Guam and he, this is a quote, examined the plan for a long time. Michaela, let me go to you. Um, do we here in the U.S. should Un act on this plan and say we're going to fire a missile, launch a missile near Guam um, do U.S. missiles have the accuracy to strike their intended target? Uh, so if, if there is a launch onto Guam or towards Guam that threaten U.S. forces there, we should absolutely strike the missile back. I don't think we would do it if the missile is, you know, if it fails or if it falls into the sea. I, I don't think we would um, use our missile defense assets in the area. But we should absolutely shoot it down if it, if it is headed towards Americans. Okay. Um, and Michael, do you believe that we have not, not only the ability to, to strike, a, to launch a missile accurately if need be, that our equipment is, is modern and where it needs to be, but do we also have something like a THAAD system right. up and running and successful in preventing these missiles? Well, we've done several tests where we've been able to actually intercept an intercontinental ballistic missile. We've done two tests off the coast of California. Mm -hmm. So we've demonstrated that capability. Accurate? The, Accurately. Okay. So the issue is is not whether we can shoot down Kim Jong Il's missiles, but it's whether or not he uh, conducts an artillery strike on South Korea, mm. uh, 
targeting our soldiers and also targeting Seoul. And that's always the biggest thing because he holds South Korea hostage yeah. with thousands of artillery troops. A nation of 25 million exactly. people kind of held hostage and hanging in it's the like, balance here. We, we often exactly. forget that. One of the reasons why the Joint Chief Dun General Dunford uh, is uh, in, in the region today. Exactly, exactly. Um, Michaela, I know you don't have a, a crystal ball here, but how do you think this ends up? How do you think this winds up? There's, we see the provocations now on both sides sort of escalating Monday night. Put this on the, uh, the calendar tomorrow or, or Tuesday, it is tomorrow, in Korea. It's also their National Liberation Day. Is that prime time, in your opinion, for perhaps a, a missile launch? Hold your answer. Think about it. i got to bring in breaking news right now. We see the protests right here in New York City in front of Trump Tower as we await President Trump's arrival to New York City. Arrests are starting to happen. Adam Shapiro, what are you hearing? 